Welcome back to SmartHelping.com. Uh, as you know, we've been doing Excel models the past uh, week or and a half or so. Uh, this week I haven't done, well, I guess the past week. Last week I did them all and I've been burned out, so I just started back on them here. And today's actually an update of a previous real estate model. So as you know, this model has all these inputs you can do. It compares cash flows between, you know, based on what your dates are and the sale date of the building, the start date of the project, and holding time, and all this other stuff. So you can get cash flows and specific time frames for the whole project, and then based on the project's internal rate of return, you can have promotes and all that stuff for sponsors and investors and see breakdowns. I also added a per investor unit here. Um, as well as a chart to show the cash flows before hurdles, after hurdles, and cash on cash return rates after um, for sponsor investor. So that's great. But what I wanted to add was a discounted cash flow to this, and it was pretty straightforward. There's only one little wrinkle that I had to figure out. So we have a discounted cash flow sheet added here. You just simply put in your discount rate, whatever that is, it's going to affect the values. And then you got your project net present value, so that's taking all the cash flow of the whole project. Assuming no hurdles, well this is going to be the same no matter what, because the, the project has the same cash flows, no matter what hurdle it is. But then you got investor and sponsor net present values, which will change because the cash flows they're getting are going to change, you know, based on the internal rate of return that they end up getting. So this affects their annual cash flow that they should have. So no no hurdle. It's uh, pretty simple. It's just taking the net present value of the split between the investor and sponsor. This is cash flow after debt service. So it's basically net operating income less debt service and it's before tax. Um, and depreciation is added back in there because I do have a depreciation as a line item, but that gets bad to add it back, so it's not really counted in the cash flows. Uh, so that's saying all the cash flows you're getting back out of the project and what the value of that is. Now this doesn't take into account the cost of the project at all, which... is considered year zero but here's where the tricky part is because sometimes in year one you might have a net you might have positive cash flow so let's say you invested in the project it took four months to get set up and then you made you know start charging rent for eight months and that rent revenue was able to cover all the debt service and all the expenses and you actually made money so that that amount left over is this 733 as you see right here on the project that actually comes through for year one because you've got cash going out in year one or year zero whatever you want to call it and then cash you got actually making money back and then just as normal for year two three four five you just have money coming in as regular operations so this values all of that it takes the splits whatever you know the now if this is a negative this won't come through and these numbers will just be blank for year one if you made a net loss on the year. So what we've done is just done the discount of cash flow. It just takes the net present value of all these and it goes out to 30 years. All numbers that are zero are ignored so the the Excel calculation can deal with um, the whole line and it will just take into account values if they're there. Um, and there's your value. As you go out in time, you know, the values are discounted further. If we go up to, say, a 15% discount rate, you see these values go down. And because there's different hurdles and, and cash flows for various hurdles, we had I had to show that and what it's like. And you can see as the, as the hurdles go up, the investor's um, net present value is going up up and the sponsor's net present value is going down now let's see does that make sense well let's see so hurdle three so we're here 
we're saying the investor's net present value is less or is greater okay let me redo the calculations because I think this is I've got it backwards here because the investor the the hurdles are not gonna make the investor lose money so let me check my calculations stand by okay now oh, stand by so I fixed these turns out I did have it backwards this investor figure should be well basically these should be switched and I tricked myself because I gave the the sponsor more equity share in the just the assumptions that I put in at the input so it had me thinking backwards so let's see 60 that should be 61 and 60 and these models are very complex and I'm kinda doing on the fly here so this but it's good that I'm checking it because you know I want to make sure the numbers are right and sometimes when you get into these models it's hard to you get into all the formulas but then you gotta really take a step back and look at everything and see if it's making sense okay now that should be better so yeah the investor net present value as the hurdles are going up that value is going down sponsors value is going up and that's just that makes sense because their cash flows are going up as they're getting more equity share based on the hurdle and the hurdles just mean the, the sponsor has done a really good job selling the property or building and the cash flows justify based on whatever the two parties agree upon in this hurdle breakdown and you don't have to have a hurdle breakdown that's just uh, some people like it you can just have you could just have the simple no hurdle here's the project net present value Here's an investor share based on the capital or whatever percentage share they're getting in the deal. Here's the sponsors, and that's it. And then the investors, obviously, that could be broken down by unit based on the number of units, which we have here. I got total investor units as an input of 20. You see how much it costs to buy one unit then per investor, and how many are available. So, I mean, this kind of cash flow is what if you're trying to value a deal and really that's basically you're measuring something against another investment to try to figure out what this is worth what these future cash flows are worth what something else's future cash flows are worth and seeing what's the better investment so this is implemented the hurdles dynamically it will all update if we change any of these assumptions let's make the sponsor get less share by let's say they only invest two million now you can see all these numbers are going to change and now look at the um, the investors percentages their cash flows more but then look at as you get out you almost get to an even number because as the the, the amount of cash flow the investors are losing and the amount of cash flow the sponsors are getting almost brings it up it goes from 4 million to 12 million to 8 and 8 and that's a pretty steep uh, percentage return and that's simply because we got hurdles here are 8, 15, and 22 um, and an IRR of 39 percent now that can all change you know because I could change the um, starting rent which I have only at 1 percent of the property building cost and here we're actually financing 80 percent of the thing let's say if we're only financing 50 percent yeah the IRR goes down a bit the discounted cash flow table will still show all the numbers but you know and I probably should have this I'm gonna probably because you can see how I updated the IRR table so it highlights what hurdle you're at I probably will add that function to this so you can see based on all the inputs and everything what hurdle is actually active based on this number in this table and I was thinking about you know how this is even used in real practice and I guess it's it's more of a projection tool because you're not gonna know what the project internal rate of return is until the project's over and who knows anything can happen but you could assume certain things and that's why there's a, an assumptions tab and you can assume certain revenues and 
based on that you can always go back and apply the different percentages I guess after um, the the project is done and then you split up all the cash flows based on the internal rate of return but to know what those cash flows are going to be you have to project out the different possibilities so you can see how well how the cash flow is going to be split based on how well the the sponsor does or or what all the value inputs are so I'll have a link in the description box below this YouTube channel if you want to go buy this model I put together I put a, a an extensive amount of time into this and made it um, as dynamic as possible and used all the the knowledge I have about uh, real estate models to do this and make it as general enough so that it can be used across many different uses by nearly any you know kind of universally and have it dynamic enough though and complex enough to handle a lot of different types of inputs and remember it does show the monthly cash flows and then that all rolls up into an annual and then based on the annual I've done the discounted cash flow so you could say at hurdle three the project's net present value you're looking at you know the 21 point 21 million 21.4 million and that's uh investing 35 million I mean buying a property for 35 million only investing sponsor 2 million well here equity required from investors is 15 million and you can see how that splits 11% 88% And I guess I don't know where to go from here. We've I've told you pretty much everything with the discounted cash flow, how it works, and you could check it, make sure it's right. You can look at all the values and all the formulas are not hidden, nothing's hidden. Just change your discount rate and you'll get your values to update. Um, the primary use or the primary one of the things is uh, somebody's gonna look how much money did I put in and what are those cash future cash flows that that money put in is going to be worth so well for the sponsor your total investment which the total investment is going to be right here in these two boxes or in the input values so look at the sponsors putting in two million dollars that's the max they're putting in and the value of that two million well the cash flows it's going to get is three point seven million according to the current deal structure or the assumption structure and at hurdle three it's actually 12.7 million at a nine percent discount rate all right that's all I got for you today on the Excel models I will see you tomorrow this is smarthelping.com